But uh, I, I had to sing. Emmanuel, we worship you. We, we honor God today. We, uh, we bless him the best that we know how. Amen. For he is worthy of all of our praise. Uh, the longer I live, the more I value still being here. And uh, the more I know those who are blessed like that. And to still be able to pick and choose a place to pray and a time to worship is a gift from God and I thank him because I didn't earn it but God gave it and I, and I thank him. so hey, th thank you for that I mean I, I'm I'm in the Christmas spirit because of just that that, that praise amen and I'm, I'm thanking God for his blessings uh, announcements uh, we, we, we bless you today we, we wish God's blessing upon you today um, Reverend Thomas and Sister Malone would like to wish the congregation a blessed holiday season. Amen. And we wish them that the same. God bless you. Uh, there's a long life celebration. And this month it will be Sister Lorreen Walker and Brother Anderson Jumper. This is your first, is this your first year in it? No. no uh, 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 hey. <laughs> well, since we ignored him last year, let's make sure that we don't ignore him this year. Amen. Uh, uh, there's a missionary donation drive uh, that they're carrying. I think they have a box in the uh, conference room there for, uh, for gifts if you want to do that. But we want to celebrate uh, Brother and Sister Walker, um, Sister Loreen and Brother Jumper in long life this year. Uh, 
we're trying to help others. This is a season to help others. Uh, I don't know if you know it or not, but there are people uh, as fat as we're getting. Uh, there are people in this world who don't know where their next meal is going to come from. Uh, who don't know where their next drink of water is going to come from. And if you're blessed and you know you're blessed, then uh, I think it's okay to bless somebody else. So, so think about that. Uh, the Montreal Mission Society uh, Christmas gift card request forms are now available. Forms can be obtained from the missionary members. So uh, please see them for those. Form must be submitted by Sunday, December the 10th at 1 p.m. That's next Sunday. So if you're thinking about that, make sure you take care of that. No names will be accepted after this date. Uh, and this is for Madison County residents only that you can get the names. Uh, tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock sharp, we're having uh, our annual church meeting uh, in the lower level. Church business meeting tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock sharp. So uh, if you got reports, then you ought to be giving in to Sandy today, today really. Uh, but so if you're ahead of auxiliary, please take care of that. Uh, we are preparing uh, to go to the premiere of the new color purple. Uh, I've never been to a premiere before, I don't think. But we'll be going on, uh, what, what night is that? That is, uh, that is the 11th, the 11th. So uh, see Sister Jackson, the tickets are $15. I think she got, you know, so if you got $15, you want to go to a premiere, you know, it's one thing you go to a movie and you know, all, all the people are strange because you don't know them. Uh, it'd be nice to go someplace where we know everybody and we're there. So we, we look forward to that. Um, there is, we got this guy who, to my right, who plays the bass, but uh, there's a Kwanzaa presentation. It's going to be Thursday, December the 14th, uh, from 6 to 7, and Dr. Cheeseborough will be uh, presenting there. Yes, sir. Yeah, they had two presenters. Now we, we we know this guy, so we're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is uh, now on December the seventeenth, which is not next Sunday, but the following Sunday, is our Christmas celebration. We're going to have one service that day. It would be our Christmas program. It would be our worship day. Uh, there's a Christmas melody. Uh, the title is What's Christmas Without Christ? So there's a, a refreshments in the lower level afterwards. We're going to have uh, the, the, the youth presentations, and I'll give a short sermon after that. But it's going to be one service, so you won't have to worry about trying to go and come. Uh, just plan to come. And we're not, we're not going to be that long, but we're going to have one service. So uh, write it down. And, uh, 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 Bible study every Wednesday at noon and prayer meeting every Wednesday from 6 to 7. That's a lot, huh? So, but you have, have those flyers. If you don't know, uh, again, now we have a Facebook page. How you get there? Anybody know? Mount Joy Church dot com. Oh, Mount M T J O Y M B C dot org. And all that information that Pastor just struggled through will be there for you. And and anything going on that I don't know what's going on will be there. So uh uh, uh, and the key arc. The key arc code will take you right to the page. Oh, if I, uh, how you do that? 
I've been hearing about these QR codes, but how you do that? If you put, you take your phone, my phone, and you put your phone to the thing. And you got to turn to the little picture box to do it, to do it, and you take a picture of that QR code, and Shazam, you'll be there. <laughs> you know what? We're going to figure it out. <laughs> I'm, I am not the only, I'm not the only one. I'm helping, is somebody else in the same place that I am? <laughs> A amen, amen. It's okay to laugh at yourself. Amen. Other people are laughing already, so you might, you, might, you might as well laugh with them. Amen. It's a, it's a, it's a serious, serious time. Uh, we, we thank God that we can be together and be glad that we got a chance to be together. And this is our time uh, before we ask God to bless us. We ought to bless God. We're going to ask the uh, brother Jeff. Would you bring? Would you bring the offering basket? We're going to bless the offering. I don't know if you've given yet. If you haven't, you may. Uh, but there's there's a sacredness about about giving that I don't want to lose. Uh, uh, And, I'm, and, and then there's no pressure on anyone to give, but if you want to give, we'll give you opportunity. My brother and his wife sent their offering. They're 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 streaming, but they sent their offering. Not now. Uh, we didn't just do this to do this, but it's a symbol of, of God's, God being first and yeah. he yeah. being in charge of our blessings. And when we return the, the first tenth to him, he blesses the 90. And that's what I'm after. Everybody who got a piece of me uh, have raised it <laughs> and they want more. And I need God's blessing on what I have, so uh, I, I make sure that I include him and I ask him to bless it. Father God, we come today in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for what you've given to us. And Father, we present to you what you gave, your portion. We ask your blessings. We ask that you would be with us, that you would rebuke the devourer that you bless the 90, that you would bless your people, Lord, and, and somebody wanted to give but didn't have, and we ask for a blessing upon them also. For those who've given, to, for those who are sending it in, for those, Father, who are, are mailing it, bless them too. And show us, dear Lord, how, how to trust you, Father, and, 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 and reward our trust with your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we? Yeah. 
Yes, the world. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man, every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start. So let's start right now. We can pray. We can pray. We'll sing hallelujah till you come again. And we'll dance in your presence until you come again. Sing hallelujah till you come again. And we'll dance in your presence till you come again so we'll sing so we'll sing hallelujah till you come again we'll dance in your presence Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. 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 I just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. King of glory, fill this place. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. One more time. King of glory. King of glory. Fill this place. Just want to be with you. Just want to be. Just want to be with you. You know, 
isn't that what worship really is? Being with God. I, I remember when my grandmother was still alive. I had a hard day. I would drive down in Madison. That's where I came from. And just lay on the couch. I, I might not say anything, but just being there for a while. Bless me. And, and sometimes we want bells to ring or whatever, but just being with God. That's what it's really all about. Not what you're going to get. Not bragging about what you've done. Yeah. But just being with God. Just want to be, I, I, I love that. just want to be with you. full of hate and complaints and problems and issues. It's a blessing to take time to just be with God. Amen? Yeah. And we have to be careful that we don't let ourselves get consumed with all the ugly stuff around us. It's there. And we ought to take time to get away from that. And be with the family of God. You know, and, and, and I'm going to say this. Uh, sometimes we, 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 we love God. But we can't stand that sister over there. Or that brother in a corner. But the greatest commandment, and I'm going to say it again, is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. And Jesus, when, he, when they asked him that, he didn't even leave space to breathe. And you love your brother, your sister, as yourself. So if I'm not loving you now, then I need to work on that. I need to let God help me with that. Because my day is better, my day is better when I do. Can, 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 we, can we pray for ourselves and for our, our areas of, 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 of letdown where, where we don't feel about that brother, that sister, the way we ought to? Can we pray for ourselves so that God can, what did David said, creating me a clean heart? And Lord, I used to have the right spirit, but somehow uh, it don't seem like it. We have to clean our houses. To, to <laughs> we don't notice, but dirt comes in. Huh? And we don't know when or how, but it's there. And never mind how it got there, we got to let God clean it. Yes, yes. Father God, we pray for us. We pray for our spirits, for our hearts. We pray for our attitudes and You will create in us clean hearts 
that we can love you and love each other. Even if we're not the same color or the same sex or the same principles or ideas, we trust you, Lord, to bind us together so strong that, that one of us could not fall for the other. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. We're not starting with the first part. We're starting with the latter part. Uh, we start with verse 23, and we read down to 30. Let's read it together. Now John also was baptizing in Ammon near Salem, because there was much water there. And they came and were baptized, for John had not yet been thrown into prison. Then there arose a dispute between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purification. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you beyond the Jordan, to whom you have testified, behold, he is baptizing, and all are coming to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from above. You will shall bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy is mine in fear. He must increase, but I must decrease. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. I'm, I, I'm going to take what, what John said about himself and uh, expand it to include all of us. He must increase, and we must decrease. Everybody say it with me. He must increase, and we must decrease. Some of you may not know that before I went into education, I worked for a bank for more than 20 years in the business world, in the land of business. Now, you know, if you haven't been in business, you, you don't know how, uh, how it runs there. But I don't know if people use the term anywhere else, but in the business world, people often refer to life and work as a rat race. Anybody ever heard, ever heard being part, I'm, I'm in the rat race? And that meant that the race was bigger than us, and that compared to the big picture, we were like rats running around trying to exist or get ahead. The older I get, the, the, the longer I, I have the opportunity to live in this world, the more I realize that everybody, some more than others, but to some extent, all of us are living in a world that is bigger than us, and we are all in a rat race, struggling to make it. We're all uh, struggling to win in our, uh, in our struggle. We are, we are pressing to somehow make the grade, uh, struggling to look good in, in the process, struggling to feel good about ourselves, struggling to be accepted by others, yeah. sometimes our own family, yeah. struggling to be recognized as, as being important, as being somebody, yeah. struggling to be accepted struggling for, for recognition and on and on and on. I, I could go on with that. Yeah. But, but we're, we're struggling. We're in a rat race to try to be who we want to be or who we should be. 
I, I remember back when I was an administrator or a principal of a, uh, a school for troubled students, the students would uh, come to school sometimes with so many issues that they ended up in my office instead of being able to stay in class and learn. And that always led to a conversation. And in our conversations, the students would often complain to me about how difficult it was for them to deal with their parents yeah. and or, or, or other teachers. Or, or and, and I used to make the point to them that it wasn't easy trying to be a parent. Uh -huh. And, and, and just, 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 what, just like you're struggling to, to, uh, to deal with your parents, they're struggling to deal with you. And that situation often called for a conversation with the parents. And the parents would always talk to me about how, uh, how much of a problem their children were and having their children. And, and it's kind of funny because I gave them the same speech that I gave the students. It's not so easy to be a parent. Right. Huh? If we think about it, most of us will realize how much of a struggle it must be. I know it's a long time ago for some of us. But think about babies. And coming in and, 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 and needing somebody to look out for everything and uh, needing somebody to uh, give you a drink of water and needing somebody to give you some milk or needing somebody to change your diaper and, and, and what a struggle it is. And, and, and the older you get, the more responsibility you have to do for yourself. And uh, e even though you're supposed to be able to do stuff, you can't quite get it done. It's a struggle. That's why so many of us are so competitive in our efforts to succeed. Uh, and I, I, I got a strong case. You know, I, I don't know where it came from, but uh, I, I want to be first. I, when the score is told, I, I, I want to win. I, I, I want to be, you know, and we all want to count. Yeah. We, we all want to re be recognized. We, we want to be included in the conversation so we compete with those around us for space. Young against old and old against young. Men against boys and women against girls, male against female and female against male. Black against white and white against black. And, and the really scary point that I, I, I want to get you to, to see is that if we don't watch ourselves, we'll look up and we'll be in competition against God. When I think back in the Old Testament, and, 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 and Pharaoh and the reason he was destroyed was that he, he put himself in, into a competition that he couldn't win. He called himself limiting and controlling the, the children of Israel, but he really entered into a great competition against God. And I don't have to tell you that, that there's no way to win when you compete with the will of God. This third chapter of the gospel according to the apostle John is famous for the conversion between, the, uh, between the, the conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus when Nicodemus came to him and, and, and we all hear, heard that and heard that a, a lot of times and uh, Nicodemus uh, uh, slipped away from his friends and did it at night and, and he acknowledged that he and his associates had been talking and they had already concluded that Jesus was a teacher and sent from God and that they knew that because of his miracles and, and, and we know that, that, that you're special Jesus uh, based on uh, the powerful things you've done and I, I, I can't stay here long but I have to note that Jesus didn't even let him explain what he was talking about or what he wanted before he told them that he had to be born again you know, and, and sometimes we want to jump in someplace when we haven't started where we need to start. Yeah. And, and, and Nicodemus was trying to uh, jump in uh, ahead of where he needed to start, and he said, you know what, Nicodemus, don't even start. The first thing you've got to consider is you've got to be born again. 
Is anybody here who just uh, joined? Sometimes we join church. But you know that joining church don't save you? Sometimes we do good deeds, but doing good deeds don't. Now, it, it's, it's good to join church, and it's good to do good deeds, but that don't save us. Uh, you can't sneak in here when, uh, when nobody's looking and, and make a real connection with me. You've got to make a connection with God. Yeah. Uh, and it's more than that. You have to be changed, is what Jesus was saying. Sometimes we can't get out what we want to say. I, I, I know I have the problem. Sometimes I want to say it, but I can't get it out. And the good thing about faith and salvation is that God knows what's in our heart. And he'll deal with us according to if we don't, if, even if you don't say it just right. We, we got this bad habit of judging everybody and, and making sure they did everything they needed to do. But God looks at our heart and, and sometimes even when we, we miss say it, he gets it. I got to speed this up so we can get to the part we got to get to. But Jesus says to Nicodemus in verse 14, and then this relates to the message. In verse 14, Jesus says to Nicodemus, uh, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. I better explain. When Israel was in the wilderness, having been delivered from slavery in Egypt, God fed them with manna from heaven. Every morning when they got up and the dew fell, manna was there. Okay? All they had to do was go pick, out, pick it up. But after a while, the people became dissatisfied and began to murmur, saying that uh, they want some meat. Okay? So Moses told God, and God sent quail. And the people gorged themselves on quail until it made them sick. And Israel was so unappreciative and disrespectful of God that the God sent serpents to, uh, who began to bite them and they began to die. And, and then, as usual, they, 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 they panicked and turned to Moses. Of course, Moses called on God. And God told Moses to make a, a bronze image of a snake. And he made the bronze image. He hugged her. He says, anybody who looks on this bronze image would be healed. It wouldn't die. So, so what, what, what Jesus was telling, uh, uh, he said, uh, just as that bronze snake was lifted up, so must Christ be lifted up. You know, and we, we, we get these bright ideas. We do all kind of stuff in church uh, to call ourselves making things happen instead of lifting up the Son of God. And that's the key. We want to show people us, but the only way people can be saved for, is for us to lift up Jesus. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tie this in. So, uh, there's a lot more in this chapter, but we, we, we got to get down to what we're talking about. Uh, in verse 23, we read that. You have to go back and read the other parts yourself. This is now, after Jesus was baptized by John in the Jordan River. This is after the dove lighted on his shoulder and remained. And this is after John heard the voice of God saying, this is my beloved son, who I'm well pleased. Uh, all, all of that was, what was the kickoff of, of, of his ministry along with his 40 days of testing in the wilderness. But uh, John's gospel doesn't give us all those details, but we find them in other gospels. We pick this up with Jesus and his disciples in Judea, where Jesus taught and baptized those who believed. Now, according to verse 23, if you look close, John was also baptizing people in, in, in Anon uh, uh, near Salem because there was a lot of water there. So some people were, were coming to John to be baptized and many more were going to Jesus and his disciples baptized them. Now, this is all before John was arrested and thrown in jail, okay? So there arose a disagreement between John's disciples and the other Jews about 
purification, you know. Well, well, well is that necessary? John's disciples stood up for what he, he was doing in, in, in the face of the contrary doctrine. You know what? Uh, we got all kind of doctrines in church nowadays. And in case you haven't discovered it before now, people in church don't always agree. Sometimes there's a contrary doctrine in the same church. And while they were standing up and, and, and uh, protecting John, some of them thought about Jesus. In verse 26, that they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, wait a minute, they called Jesus Rabbi. Huh? Rabbi, they said, he who was with you beyond the Jordan, to whom you have testified, that guy you baptized the other day, the, uh, the other night, uh, uh, before all the thunder came and we, we heard the voice. That guy that you kind of bowed down to. He's now baptizing and all the people are going to him instead of coming to you. He's taking all your clients. People are even leaving you and going to him. You're losing the race now. Remember now, we're all trying to win. You see, Rabbi, it, it's between him and you, and he's winning. What you going to do? What do you say about that? People who, who love you, people who believe in you, people who are, are related to you and, and behind you will, will put you into competition if you let them. They will even have you competing with God if you let them. And you can say stuff and, and do stuff and act in ways that will uh, put you in a, a, a contest with, with the way of God and the will of God. If you don't watch yourself. John the Baptist knew that and, and he wasn't going to let it happen. Uh, listen to what John said in response. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bride who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy is mine. Uh, John was, was seeing, uh, now, now the people who were coming were the bride. And, and Jesus huh, is the bridegroom, the Savior. And, and John was saying that it's a good thing yeah. if these people are going to Jesus to be baptized. It's, it's a good thing if they're leaving me and, and, and going to him. Uh, they ought to go to him. He is the, I'm just a friend of the bridegroom. And I rejoice when, 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 when they hook up. I'm glad, I'm happy that people are going to him. And, and, and that's what they ought to be. For anyone who, who might have missed what John was saying and, and missed the point uh, God wants us to get here, John knew something that some of us have forgotten. John knew that he and Jesus were on the same team. Listen to me now. That person over in the other pew who's doing something different that you're dogging out, that, 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 you, that you're pulling down. You know, I, 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 play, I play football, and sometimes in the games and in, in practices in life, uh, you know, some people you get along with better than you get along with others. And, and, and sometimes people that you didn't get along with, if you're on the line and they're running back, and you, you block hard for some folk when they're running the ball, but when that guy, 
gets the ball, you miss your block. And when that happens, a good coach will pull you to the side and let you know that and remind you that we're trying to win this game and be on the same team. And you got to do your job whether they was your favorite person or not. I see that happen in the church sometimes. We pick out folk. We, we, we have people who are on the same team, trying to get the same thing done, trying to glorify God, trying to get us where we ought to be. But because of a personal thing that we have, we don't block when they're running the ball. I, I know it's not, you know, but, but, but you know, it, it, it happens, you know, and, and we need to understand that uh, we're, we're holding up uh, the, the, the bloodstained banner and, and it won't be straight and people won't be able to read it if you don't hold up your corner. All of us want and even need some attention. All of us uh, have some ideas about what should be done and how it should be done. All of us want to be looked up to and recognized, but uh, we have to be careful to realize that all of us look around the church and visualize those who are missing today, those who are not your favorite, and realize that we're all on the same team. And also know that it's God's team and not ours. I don't want to insult anyone or, or anything, but uh, we can get glory from people uh, for our good deeds. But although, uh, uh, although faith in God leads us to good deeds, those good deeds won't save us. In most of those uh, cases, we, we, we take credit for what we, we do outside of faith. And sometimes inside of faith. But we don't earn righteousness and eternity with God because of what we do good, good deeds. We do good deeds because we are righteous and, and children of God. In the church, we have opportunity to do good, but we're also called to love and mean good. All of us, uh, our credit goes to God. And it's God's team, the praise and the glory yeah. belong to him. Uh, when it comes to life and, and, and the church and the salvation of lost souls, listen to me now. We're only part of the undercard. We've got to be careful to yield to the Savior. We have to be careful to realize that God is in charge and not us. It's okay to have some good ideas. It's okay to have an idea of, uh, of how we think it should be, but we have to always humble ourselves before the hand of God and the will of God. Uh, what did Jesus say when he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane? Anybody remember? He didn't want to do what he had to do. But he said, not my will but thy will be done. Uh, he said, not my way. Some, sometimes, some of us, you know, if you don't do it our way, we ain't, we ain't going. <laughs> not what I want, Lord. I surrender to what you want. And, and some of us have gotten so, so self-centered and self-confident in how great we are and how smart we are and how right we are that we don't even bother to see or to hear what God has to say about it. Some of us want our, our, our way so bad that we haven't even considered God's way. Uh, Paul prayed three times for God to take away his thorn in the flesh. Three times. We were saying this morning in Sunday school down about uh, how, how, how much of a good guy Paul was and how, how great he was and how satisfied he was. He, and, and he was dedicated. God's answer to Paul was my grace is sufficient for you. No. Did you know that sometimes God's answer is my grace is sufficient? No. 
I'm using that, that, that thorn in your flesh to, to make you uh, and, and keep you who I need you to be. But Lord, it, it don't feel good. And I don't want it. Make it go away. Again, God said, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul. Deal with it. Do what I, I called you and, uh, and gifted you to do. And, and, and this, this has to be the, the most difficult point of this message for, for all of us to, to accept. But, but it's also the most important point that we need to understand. Everybody, I get this. So if you sleep, wake up. <laughs> Sit up straight in your seat if you're home. Pay attention. If you're laying down, get up. Trouble in your life. Is no excuse for you to quit the faith. Amen. Stay with me now. We are we, we're called to to minister or or or, or, or serve. Minister and serve mean the same thing. A, a minister is a servant. We are called to minister or serve while we suffer. I, I know it don't sound good. But just because you're going through is not an excuse for you to stop. And, and in fact, if you, if, if you stop while you're going through, you'll keep on going through. Uh, sometime when I'm driving and it's raining real hard, you know, and uh, 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 if I stop, I'm going to stay in the rain. But if I keep on driving, I'm liable to get through. Huh? The walk, listen now, the walk of faith is not always easy. I, I didn't just pull it out of the air. I, I can prove it. Uh, 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 Psalm 23, David said, yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death. You got to go that way to get home. The only way we can ever get to glory is to go through the shadow of death. If you're ever going to walk on the mountain, you must first walk through the valley. In fact, the mountain is surrounded by the valley. We must go through what we have to go through before we will ever see the victory. David was destined for the throne of Israel uh, and, and Judah. But before he got there, he had to endure, what, years of, of being hunted like an animal by Saul. And he couldn't get to the throne without that. Just because you have faith for the outcome does not mean that you won't have some pain yeah. in the process. I said, just because you have faith for the outcome does not mean that you won't have some pain in the process. Paul was diligent in taking the gospel all over the known world. And all the time he did it, the Jews were chasing him, starting trouble. He was arrested, beaten with the cat of nine tails, beaten with rods, shipwrecked, stoned three times. In between, you see, they lock him up, and, and when he get out, he, he start back on what God called him to do. But it, all that stuff happened in between his missionary trips to spread the gospel. How many know that all of the disciples who turned the world upside down were martyred? Sometimes people who, or who you love dearly hurt you deeply. Like it or not, you still love them. Huh? I know it sounds crazy, but many times we suffer while we serve. There have been times uh, already that, that I, I, I've had my heart broken by people in the church while I served 
the church. Young people, you can't allow your church hurt to stop you. Or your family hurt. So you, you, you don't get out of the family because somebody in the family hurt you. <laughs> Do you? I know you don't like that, but God has to remind me sometimes that he doesn't answer to me. I answer to him. One last thing and I'll, I'll be done. I'm troubled because it is evident to anyone who pays attention that some of us are not on the same page. And I, I, I love the Sunday school lesson. Paul says, you know what, uh, 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 some preach the gospel to try to get back at me. Uh, some are not sincere. Some of the, he says, but uh, the gospel got preached. Oh, I love that. And uh, some of us don't realize what we're supposed to be here for. I, I, I'm praying for our, our direction because of it. Uh, God told me to tell you that it, it's time for us to stop fighting each other over what we think and what we want and begin to look to him for his will and for what he wants. We must decrease so that God can increase. We talk about Israel and Palestine. We talk about Russia and the Ukraine. We, uh, we need to be talking about the praying and praying about uh, our fight for the future of the church. If you keep doing everything our way, we will destroy it. Only by seeking and sticking with the way God ordained will the church survive. We must decrease so that he can increase. This is a time of transition. The church has been destabilized. And God wants to give us balance again. And that means that things have to change. And the way it used to be is, is past in some cases and gone. And there has been a, a shift in some things, uh, you know, and uh, we must decrease. And he must increase. I, I, I'm a little better now, but some of you may know that I, I've been having problems with my balance. You know, my, my, my uh, numbness and, uh, you know, and sometimes when, when I was walking along with my arms straight, you know, and my head up. I would all of a sudden feel, you, you, you ever had that? Some of y'all. But during those times, I, I learned that if I raised my arms and I looked up, I wouldn't fall. But you see, that now that they don't let them do it anymore, but they used to have these high rope people walking. And you notice they had these long bars, and you see them doing, you know, that's to keep the balance. We have to hold our arms out, our hands up to God and stop looking at ourselves yeah. and look up. And that'll help us to be balanced. And I know it's not the way we used to be able to walk. I used to be able to, to, to take the stairs three or four at a time. <laughs> but I don't do that no more. I got my arm out, and I'm, t I'm, 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 I'm touching the rail, and I'm looking where I'm going. Huh? Real faith is trusting God in what to do now. Even though it might not mean that we have uh, uh, to get our way all the time, it might mean that we have to suffer while we serve. Mothers know, and hopefully fathers do too. You got a sick baby, you do what you got to do. Huh? 
And, and you, you don't want to fool with that mess you got to fool with sometimes. But you got to do what you got to do. And as people of God, we got to do what we got to do. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you. Help us to have the guts, help us to have the will to decrease so that you can increase. To put our way, our feelings, all that aside and look to you and say like Jesus say Lord not my will not my way but thy will be done Amen Jesus knew that we couldn't be saved if he didn't go through it if you're here today and you're looking for a place of fellowship, if you want a word of prayer, if you feel the pressure of, you know, uh, 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 boy, you know, we, we all go through stuff. But how do you go through? It's important. Are you looking to yourself? Or are you looking up? And this is our altar prayer also. This is our time of being with God. Father God, we come in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we, we, we say we're willing to decrease so that you can increase. We say not my will, not our will, but your will be done. We say it's not us against them, but it's just us and you and doing your will and your way. We pray for souls that are troubled and discouraged right now. We pray for Christians, dear Lord, who have dropped out, that they would drop back in. We pray for the lost that they might know of your love and, 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 and trust you as their Savior. Somebody here has been pushing for their way. We pray for surrender right now that they may say, I must decrease, that he must increase. We pray for somebody on the, on, on the ledge, on the edge, uh, uh, trying to make a decision. Touch hearts, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Deliver, Father, those who are lost and, and, and can't find themselves. And Lord, we thank you for it. And we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Will you come today? This time we'll have our communion. If you don't have one, uh, you will be served. First Corinthians. Chapter 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. 
For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do shew the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, that's mankind, and so let him eat of this bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. In, you know, salvation is of the Lord, not of us. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. So we, what we're doing here is we're celebrating not our deeds. We're celebrating the sacrifice of Christ. He died so that we could live. His body was broken. His blood was shed so that ours didn't have to be. We go through some things, but in what we go through, we keep the faith, knowing that the victory has already been won. Father God, we look to you. We celebrate your gift. We celebrate the sacrifice of Jesus. And Father, we own you just as you've already owned us. We trust you for our salvation and for our service. Bless us. Bless what we take. Bless us to be a blessing to others. Let us eat and drink. Amen. Uh, I think the young people are working on their program after after morning worship. Uh, this year we're we're doing something different on the 17th. We're combining the service, uh, the the Christmas program, and the morning worship will be one service. Uh, amen. So we encourage you. So you don't have to uh, decide how long you're going to stay. Whatever we're gonna, it won't be that long, but we're going to uh, incorporate the Christmas program into the morning worship on the 17th. And they're doing some things that I think you enjoy. So uh, we invite you to, to participate in that. Uh, if our hearts are clear, anything we left out, amen. May we stand. And now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth now forevermore. Amen.